Warning, this show may contain some crude humor and mild swearing. Listener discretion is advised. The show was produced by Geek Happy Network, creators of the very best in audible oracle entertainment. In other words, podcasts. If you enjoy listening to The Smorgasbord, remember to subscribe to the show on Spotify or on your favorite podcast app. Remember to leave a review. We'd love to hear your thoughts. This is Smorgasbord! Welcome to Smorgasbord, a show where we explore the rituals, myths, and all things strange about the world of food. I'm Mick, and here today is... I am struggling to stay awake. Hello, struggling to stay awake. (laughs) Angel. What happened to Angel? Oh, there she is. (laughs) I'm here, I'm here. here. (laughs) So how are things? Um, I've only had one coffee today. Oh, right, I was supposed to pour... You guys coffee? Okay. Well, we have some coffee. <laughs> oh, no, coffee we can we can power through this. Let's okay, go. Well, power through it. There's a motivation today is we're going to be motivated by coffee because today <laughs> we're talking about bird spit. Oh, God. <laughs> That's it, guys. That's the episode. <laughs> That's the episode. Yum. You could Google the rest. <laughs> spit is not something that I even picture birds ever having. Yeah. So bird spit is a thing and People eating bird spit is what another you, thing. Like juice a bird spit. I don't know. I guess you grab a bird by its <laughs> legs and then you squeeze it. it. <laughs> 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 you need like a bigger bird, like a like a penguin. Yeah. Right? Like a <laughs> but then if you, you, it would be hard to grab the two legs of the penguin. No, then you can just properly. you can just hug it and like squeeze it. But it might come out the other way. That's yeah. not spit anymore. <laughs> I don't know. You take your chances, man. <laughs> you want to eat this? Half and half. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you could put, I guess you could plug up whole- the other end. <laughs> We're not doing that. <laughs> Last episode, we were a mess. This episode, we're a jolly mess. Oh, boy. Well, things are getting worse. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so birds, drinking bird spit essentially is you grab the legs of a bird, you grab. With one hand, the other hand, you grab the belly of the bird and you squeeze up towards the mouth. Mm. And then that's how you harvest the bird spit. Like, is the bird dead <laughs> by the time you're done squeezing it? Like, no, what if it's you like a live hard? bird. So, because you got it, you have to, you need it to make that spitting motion. Oh, well, I mean, like, birds so are very like, fragile because they're very yeah, tiny. So, like, generally, like, push but it out. But if you, like, push it out too hard, you're going to snap its neck. <laughs> Well, you don't get to the neck, because the neck, that's why the bird needs to be alive, because it mm. takes care of the neck part. You just squeeze the body to get the... Yeah, I feel like you can very easily crush yeah. a bird, is what I mean. Yeah, I guess we should put another disclaimer that none of that was real. <laughs> <laughs> Since you didn't tell me anything about this, this is prior why, to, yeah. <laughs> this is what I thought yeah, we it didn't, was I didn't tell Angel anything about this episode, so I figured <laughs> we'll just throw something in there, because this is probably going to come out in April. <laughs> And we hired a resident lawyer last episode, so now I could throw disclaimers everywhere. <laughs> it's okay, she approves. Yeah. Yeah, so drinking or eating bird spit is a thing apparently predominantly in Asia, and which has grown popularity as of late, and even reaching some areas of North America. I think it's good to remind everybody that we're actually, it's not actually just directly bird spit that we get from this dish, it's actually the spit forms into something and then it becomes a dish. It's uh, common in Asia and it's primarily only from a specific bird, which is the swallow or the swiftlet, which is of the genus Colocali. They're small, right? They're tiny, very small. Now how many, how much water do you have to force them to drink for them to <laughs> That's spit? why it's easy to squeeze it, just do two fingers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so when we talk about drinking bird spit, we don't actually mean being fed by a bird or a bird spitting into an innovator's mouth. But not that this makes it any less strange, we're really talking about eating a bird's nest, specifically from the swiftlet. So the swiftlet itself would use its spit to make the nest, and then you harvest the nest. Oh. To make the bird's nest. Like- Soup, which is the popular dish in Asia. Right, and you eat the twigs and everything? 
whatever it no, chose to make. Um, well, so the these swiftlets, they usually live in dark caves. And like similar to bats, they use echolocation and stuff like that to get around. So obviously when they live in these caves, you don't get as many twigs and leaves right. and all that. So these birds had to cleverly improvise and use their spit instead mm-hmm. to make nests instead so of So their entire twigs. nest is made of spit. Yeah. There's no like base material. No, it's just spit. Wow. More or less, pretty much, yeah. Like, I'm, I'm sure they, like, impressed. digest or something in their mouth that turns... You know how, I guess you could think that a spider's web is essentially right. spider spit. Okay. Then, I guess, in comparison, this would be a swiftless spit making a swiftlet okay. web. Now, the I reason... guess I just think of it as super liquid. Yeah, so unlike our spit, which is very watery, the spit of the swiftlet hardens into somewhat of a, f- a fibrous substance, which eventually forms into their nests. If you look at the, they look like... um. What's crawpack and shrimp crackers? They look like little shrimp oh, okay. crackers. Well, or foamy. Like when you have calluses in your hand and you try to rip it off and you get a really big piece off. Ew. Yeah, I mean, let's stick with the shrimp crackers. Okay. <laughs> Almost, I guess, like how cement works, right? Like, it just, you spit it out and then mm. it hardens It turns up. into a thing. Yeah. We mentioned it probably evolved because of them living in caves and not having twigs and branches <laughs> available. Because these birds do need to recreate their nests every time, and they're tiny little birds trying to create nests. Harvesting it happens only really three to four times a year, often during specific times of the bird's life, like when before the leg, eggs are laid or once swiftlets mature. So we don't. There's some level of ecological sensitivity to how we harvest it as humans. I mean, it just sucks for them to go out, come back. Oh, my house is gone. Yeah. Motherfuckers. Yeah. <laughs> Better start. Better start oh, spin. Yeah. <laughs> ah, my house is gone. Oh, yeah. look at it. I started a new one. <laughs> yeah. Generally speaking, also swiftlets are not endangered, and most countries have some level of regulation to minimize the abuse of harvesting these nets. Of course, this doesn't mean abuse does not happen. So, Of course it times. does. Yeah. Trust no one. Yeah. But also limits the the purchases of this nest because it is, you know, like it is limited in supply. So the demand for it could be super high, but it is also super expensive. So depending on the quality of these nests, it can cost somewhere in the upwards of thousands, tens of thousands Ooh. of dollars per kilogram of these nests. Okay. A kilo. <laughs> I would like a kilo of nest. Yeah. But still, that's like a small baggie. Small bag of probably like would be like a few hundred dollars. The quality of these nests are determined by its color. Common colors of these nests are white, yellow, black, and red. Can you guess which one the worst one is? Red. Oh, actually, it's the most expensive one. Oh really? I don't know. I don't know how the grading of this works. Uh, black's the worst one. But red is the most expensive, then white, all the way until black. Uh-huh. The reason red is the most expensive is because it's believed to be the rarest and contain more minerals and nutrients. Oh, okay. Than other things. Some people thought it was because it's red because of the blood, but really it's more just having more minerals and nutrients, oh, I guess. Yeah, I was my first guess spit. was they're chucking up blood, they probably have tuberculosis. <laughs> tuberculosis. <laughs> tuberculosis. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure if want to eat. Yeah. Eat only if needed. Black's the worst because it tends to have more impurities like dirt or feathers that make it black. Ew. So <laughs> birds wouldn't have necessarily black spit. And something would have caused it to be black. It's usually something like dirt or something like that. That's why white is favored over black. All right. The reason, actually, I found out about this was I was listening to Beautiful Anonymous, the podcast, and one of the people they were talking to was this girl who, like, went home for the holidays, and her grandmother had her cleaning bird spit. (laughs) So essentially trying to make darker nests a little bit cleaner. Right. So you kind of clean it up. There's a process you could do to kind of clean up the nests a little bit to make it more pure. Because, yeah, it does make differences in the dollar side of things when you sell it again. Oh. Collecting these nests aren't the easiest of things to do. Like we mentioned, these birds are found in caves, so collectors usually have to climb dangerous heights to grab these nests. And it kind of reminds me of like playing Skyrim, and then you just <laughs> keep trying to jump up a wall and hope to God there's something there. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. No, all I did was hoard cheese. Oh, all I did was climb mountains. <laughs> like, watch the sound of music and I climbed every mountain. We have our priorities, man. Yeah. And I was like, all oh, right, I have quests. But then, can I sneak it? <laughs> 
If I can't Can I take the cheese? I think that's why I kept climbing all the mountains. Because I kept trying to sneak around all the bad guys. Why didn't you just put your points in a sneak? I did. Oh. I think at some point I was like level 59 sneak and like zero combat. (laughs) So if they punch you, turn around and punch you in the face, you're done. Oh, I just run. Oh, yeah. I reset the game. I was like, I, I wonder if I could finish this game and just sneak. I think I got points in my archery thing. So that would help hunting down Swiftlets. Swiftlets. Yeah. It can be the nest destroyer. Yeah. But I don't actually think there is a bird's nest. Is there a bird's nest item in Skyrim? I don't know. I don't remember. It's been a yeah, while. I don't think so. But anyway, so yeah, that's why it's kind of a little bit harder to grab these nests. These birds are small, first of all. Second of all, they're in caves, so you kind of have to get around that. Um, Nowadays, urban nest farms do exist, making the collection process a little bit simpler. So essentially, they're just multi-story homes that have little small caverns for swiftlets to fly and nestle themselves as a a home there. Mm. Nowadays, urban nest farms do exist, making the collection process much simpler. These essentially are multi-story homes with small caverns small caverns for swiftlets to fly and nestle a home. Now, of course, the nests that are collected naturally or collected in these caves do tend to carry a higher price than these pre-made houses. What also adds to the price, like we mentioned, is the cleanliness of the nest. So cleaning the nest is not so simple. You kind of have to remove all forms of debris without trying to damage the nest too much. Yeah, if it's spit, is it water soluble? (laughs) You start cleaning it, it's just... Yeah, it it starts melting. Like, imagine if you're freaking out... (laughs) You start like, sweating in your hands, so this thing starts uh, melting it's gone, in your It's hand. like cotton candy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Given the high price of these things, one thing that does occur is counterfeiting. So they would use animal fat or seaweed to kind oh, of recreate weird. these um, things. Some people say the taste is similar. You just don't get the nutritional benefits if uh. it has any. Why do we harvest all these bird nests? People are weird. Yeah, yeah people <laughs> are weird. And the reason is in Asia, they make the dish called bird's nest soup. People are weird. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but do not be fooled. There are also some dishes that use the term bird's nest that aren't actually y- y- made out of bird's nest. So one example is that there's things like bird's nest cookies, which really is more Oh, of, those are good. Yeah. It's just kind of shaped like a bird's nest. Exactly. So those ones are more just shaped like bird's nest and don't actually use bird's nest. But the bird's nest soup is uses mm-hmm. real bird's nests. Where in Asia? Um, it's actually mostly in China, yeah. but harvested all around southeast asia and actually eaten in different parts so like apparently there's a place in palawan in the philippines that do eat it but generally harvested i think is it myanmar or malaysia i think it's myanmar so it's generally exported into or imported into china nowadays the dish itself is called yanwo Yanwo. (laughs) i don't even know the soup itself yeah it's called yanwo y-n-w-o which is consumed as far back as the Tang or the Ming dynasty over 1,500 years ago. It's mostly consumed in China, but also found in Southeast Asian countries like the Philippines, Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, or Vietnam. Some rough estimates, this is the crazy part, say that this industry is worth about $5 billion. What? Oh, dang. That's a lot of swiftlets. That is a lot. Of saliva. That and a lot, lot of stuff. bird spit, yeah. But it is pretty expensive, right? Like, so... That's a lot of repossession. Yeah. Foreclosure. Of yeah. These poor birds. And I think that's why I was, in that episode I was listening to that the grandma was doing it because then she could make clean ones mm-hmm. and then you could sell it for a few hundred bucks pretty easily. Where do they sell it to restaurants? Um, they sell it to some restaurants and some just mm. people too. Because when you actually making bird soup is pretty simple. And just like, go home and throw it in some. Water. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. Sounds you boil good. the nest in water, melting the nest into a gelatinous goop. Oh. Essentially it. Before serving, though, I mean, it depends on how you want to cook it. You could do it like that. You could also just soak the nest. You could also soak the nest overnight in cold water, then boil it in water or chicken stock and cornstarch to give it a little bit more flavor, I guess. Mm. Um, some would also add rock sugar or mix it with warm milk instead i guess also to give it some flavor now do make sure to drink it quickly 
if you like to drink it warm because you wouldn't want to microwave this because you would lose most of its health benefits. Yikes. So this dish itself is generally consumed for its nutritional and health qualities rather than its flavor. So you also don't really want to boil it in too high a temperature because you might also melt out its um, nutrients. The best way they generally say to prepare it would be to steam it slowly and then mix it into your warm milk or your water or your sugar or whatever. But yeah, steaming it or boiling it would essentially just melt it into gelatinous goop mm. like brain. Mm. But better. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> I don't spit know. Spit brain. Brain spit. spit brain. What's crazy is what I found recently is in the UAE, they found a new way to serve this bird's nest as a drink called Kim's Genuine Bird's Nest Beverage. <laughs> Essentially contains bits of the bird's nest to drink with two different flavors, rock sugar or ginseng. They're also apparently halal certified. I'm going to go with rock sugar. Yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't know what ginseng tastes like. It's like a... It tastes like a ginger that's gone moldy. Oh. Yeah. Well, is rock sugar just <laughs> sugar, sugar. that's clumped together? <laughs> yeah. Why don't you just call it sugar? Because sugar? it's like rock salt versus salt. Yeah, but then the rock salt should also only be called salt. There's a slightly different taste. No, it's, taste. Not, it's like the, it's like fine, the confectioner's sugar versus... All right, we're doing an episode on this. The difference of salt and rock salt, salt and, and sugar, sugar and, and rock sugar. And confectionery yeah. sugar. I'm going to glob up a bunch of sugar and turn it into a rock and see if you guys <laughs> see the difference. Yeah, it'll be white. Oh, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> um, so yeah, like we said, this soup is generally consumed for its health properties so when it comes to asking if whether it's healthy or not i guess it is or at least it's believed to be classified as a tonic so suggest time to consume it would be before meals or on an empty stomach to allow the nutrients to pass through your body or in- enter your body th- rather than pass through your body <laughs> yeah that's yeah. the opposite of what you want <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, when it comes to its health benefits it's believed to boost your sex drive or libido. I feel like that's what a lot of Chinese medicine claims to do. Yeah. They're like, eat this bear. <laughs> I don't know. Eat these monkeys, <laughs> Eat this bear. And hopefully your sex. <laughs> eat this. Just, at some point, you just gotta stop <laughs> like, Yeah. Like, if it's eat, your time, Eat this stop. bear penis and you'll... <laughs> be granted penis power. bear penis. <laughs> I don't know how that works. I don't think it works that way. It's I like don't know. that I don't blood episode. So. You don't drink the blood so the blood enters your system. You just... Put the blood directly into your blood vein. Yeah. So you would just put the bare penis right into your penis, penis area. <laughs> you just shove it up your dick hole. <laughs> I was thinking more just replacing, but oh, okay. okay. <laughs> you just shove you a bare dick You have to consume it. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like just shoving it up your pee hole would be better than eating a bare dick if you want. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a sex doctor, so... <laughs> <laughs> if anyone's a sex doctor, let us know if shoving a bear dick will help your sex shoving drive more than eating a bear dick. Up your dick. We like an animal bear or like a bear dick. I mean, it could be either. Yeah. Instructions not clear. <laughs> either a bear's dick or a bear dick. But see or- if you can also eat bird's nest and get super a Viagra. Yeah, true. Like. Do you really need to shove any part of a bear? <laughs> yeah. Or like, do you really need to wait till it's a nest? Can you just swap saliva <laughs> with a bird and yeah. boost your sex drive? <laughs> like, have a swift lit by your bed. Be like, I make just... out with that bird and then go have sex with your wife. <laughs> I was very anti-sex drugs. <laughs> like, if your time is up, just stop. Yeah. <laughs> you can have hobbies. You can yeah. have hobbies that's not f***ing. <laughs> you can learn to knit. And I've met, I've met enough people in my life who are like, what are hobbies? <laughs> I just fap all day. <laughs> <laughs> How do you do that? <laughs> no, make your hands useful for yeah. something else. Yeah. You can cross stitch. You can knit. That's true. You can do spiral graph. Yeah. Well, which maybe is really fun. <laughs> maybe it will help for those too. Maybe it helps with your hobbies, and not just your sex drive. I fucking hope so because yeah. I like hobbies. <laughs> but I mean, either way. Why wait till the bird makes a nest? Just make out with a bird then. <laughs> like, you know, you and your you and your partner have two birds beside your bed. Each make out with one bird. Make out with a bird. Yeah, each you make out with one bird and then go make out with each other. <laughs> this is a weird porno. <laughs> you can grab it by the legs. Yeah. <laughs> Squeeze it. Yeah. <laughs> grab it by the legs. Squeeze it. And then 
There you go. <laughs> Instant sex. That's how it works, right? This is how you renew a marriage, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> is that why they let doves out during weddings? Uh, so it's you for later, so you chase can... the bird, or the bird can come back to you when your sex and drive you... is gone after marriage? <laughs> yes, precisely. Oh. Yes. I should be an anthropologist. Yes, I am a doctor. I know this. <laughs> 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 What's that? Oh, Miss Giddens wanted us to tell you, the audience, that disclaimer, Angel's not actually. <laughs> no shit. Yeah. So yeah, when it comes to health benefits, the bird nest tube is believed to boost your sex drive and also help with cell growth. I can get behind that. It's is good that to have the same cells? thing for guys? Like, no. Boost I mean, your sex drive and help grow your Cells can be any part of your body. True. It's like, oh, you have dry flaky So it's like skin, a lottery? You know. You Is that why you have to eat like a ton of cells. the soup? Because then you don't know where the cells are going to go. It's yeah. like it's you a, level up in a game and you don't know what stats you're going to get. Could be. Like, you could ooh, eat I, a bird nest and then you have a new ear. It's like, I hope it's my penis, not my belly. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> it's my left leg. <laughs> It's like that time, I think I was in a bar once and a guy came in, his left arm was legitimately bigger than his right arm. And then he's like, you know why my left arm's bigger than my right arm? And I'm like, dude, I really don't want to know why. <laughs> and he's like, oh, because I'm because I really love Nicki Minaj. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, okay, I want to stop thinking about this, but I can't. <laughs> And now I'm in a very dark place. So the information is there yeah. for you to have. So that guy must have had so much bird nest suit. Oh my god. That he was just horny all day. He's imagining Nicki Minaj That he fapped into his, his left mouth. hand into ginormous sizes. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like he's a skinny dude, but his bicep was like as big as mine. <laughs> it was That's very impressive. Disturbing. It was, yeah. He never even, like, it never occurred to him to, like, switch arms? No. Oh. I was just trying to see if it was, like, a prosthetic or something, but it was, like, legitimately just a bigger arm. Man, it's well, a lot of steps. <laughs> it's a lot of steps. <laughs> it's a lot of Nicki Minaj videos. Yeah. You, know, you can just put it on repeat. True. <laughs> I guess, yeah, if, he, if he's the kind of guy who... Yeah. If he's innov- if he had hobbies, such as yeah. video editing, he could have clipped nope. all the best clips together. Yeah. But instead, <laughs> he was an innovator. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> That's just what I call idiots. <laughs> Innovators. I can't remember what episode we did that on, but... The last one, I think. Oh, the cheese rolling the cheese one. one. Yeah. <laughs> we gotta make a shirt of that. The innovator? Yeah. And just have a cheese? It's like, yeah, it's a cross stop. You cross out idiot, it's just innovator. <laughs> that is cute. Um, according to the research into the properties of the bird's nest, it does contain... The following. Water-soluble protein, calcium, phosphorus, iron, sodium, potassium, amino acids, and some hormones. Which I guess is why it increases your sex drive. <laughs> it's like minute bird hormones. Yeah. yeah, well. You know. You know. Yeah. Some people just need minute things for <laughs> minute things. To compensate for their shortcomings. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. we got to do a third episode now. <laughs> The protein is the main nutrient, though, in it, which helps with healing muscles, and it also helps boost your immune system. The bird's nest also contains properties which can help with skin and tissue repair. So I guess it's essentially like eating brain mm-hmm. without the cholesterol. Mm. Better brain. That is better brain, yeah. yeah. Cholesterol's baddie. Yeah. If, if you don't know what we're talking about with brain, just listen to our last episode about brain. Brain. Or don't. It was really bad. Brian. <laughs> we were really out of it that day. <laughs> that day, which is also today. Which is also today. <laughs> uh, now, there are also other claims that can help with... I mean, there are also other health claims, apparently, with this um, bird's nest soup, like keeping you young or anti-cancer, or again, the thing about the sex drive. I haven't found any research to suggest that this actually has any causational relationship to it. It might just be caused by the general health of being richer than most people. Mm-hmm. I mean, because, yeah, the soup itself is super pretty expensive, so you'd assume people who are have more money are generally healthier than other people. Or it could also just be the bird's nest. I don't know. Yeah. I would say it's just being richer than most. 
for me, the most important question is whether or not this soup is actually good or not. And with that comes the most disappointing part of this. The soup itself comes out super thick and gelatinous. It's almost like that egg soup you find in Chinese restaurants, mm. but without the flavor. Oh, the thickness gross. is mostly from the cornstarch usually, then the saliva as well, and of course the saliva doesn't really does does contribute to the gelatinous texture. But when it comes to flavor, it seems like it doesn't really have a lot of taste. Some people would just compare it to saying having a semi-seasoned chicken noodle soup. <laughs> So white people dinner. Yeah, essentially. It's like white people dinner, but by Asians. (laughs) I don't know what is it about rich people and doing bland things, but this is one of it, I think, it seems. I'm going to pay a lot of money for the blandest thing in the rest of many book. But it's okay because it's spit. Yeah. I'm going to (laughs) pay hundreds of dollars for spit. (laughs) No, thanks. Yeah. Um, It's a hard pass on me for this one. But I mean, Kim's genuine bird's nest beverage, though. Yeah, I, yeah the so rock down. sugar. Rock sugar flavor. Maybe throw a little bit of real sugar. <laughs> rock sugar is real sugar. It's just rocky. Regular sugar. <laughs> Less rocky sugar. sugar. <laughs> Pebble sugar. Yeah. Mix it with some boulder sugar. Other spit. <laughs> Make a spit and sugar concoction. Mm-mm, it's like bubble tea, but yeah. not at all. <laughs> and then serve it in a coconut shell. With a little umbrella. Yeah. There you go. Then I might be convinced to drink this thing. But <laughs> for now, I'm going to pass on this $200 dish. Yeah. If I had $200, I'd not be going towards any, anybody's spit. <laughs> no. Yeah. Anyway, that's that's the episode. What's in your palate later? Later? I don't know. I don't think I'm going to be eating more today. I do have work tomorrow, which means bringing full Tupperwares of catering (laughs) home. (laughs) Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know what we're going to do for our next episode. Maybe maybe we do a Hawaiian video episode. Yeah, let's do it. Get some of our friends and have Hawaiian pizza. And see once and for all whether or not it's Hawaiian pizza is good pizza or not. It's good pizza quest to find a good Hawaiian pizza. Okay, a good one might be harder. Yeah, see. But, okay. Ooh. And no. that's end on that ominous note. <laughs> All right. Goodbye. This is Morgan's board. Have a food-related ritual, myth, or something strange you want us to explore? Send us a message through Facebook at Geek Happy Network. We'd love to hear from our fellow foodie listeners. And while you're there, remember to subscribe or follow us too. This show was created by Angel Lynn and Mick Narciso. Hosted by Angel Lynn and Mick Narciso. Editing by Mick and logo by Angel. Come give us a listen at geekhappynetwork.com or look for us on your favorite podcast app. Oh, and be sure to follow us on Facebook or Instagram at Geek Happy Network.